Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. All your ways are good. All your ways are sure. I will trust in you alone. Higher than my side. High above my life. I will trust in you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Who you love, I'll love. Who you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. Light unto the world, light unto my life. I will live for you alone. You're the one I seek, knowing I will find all I need in you alone, in you alone. Where you go, I'll go. When you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Who you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. In your, in, in your days. Shalom, shalom, praise the Lord. Uh, my name is Charlie G and this is Lester today. I uh, thank you very much for tuning in for Slasher today. I know that you believe that each and every one of us are going to be blessed. That's the song I Will Follow by Chris Tomlin. Uh, he released it on 2010. Uh, I remember I was in high school, you know, in high school, and then you want to know the new songs. And then I was serving in my church uh, with Christ Code. And then uh, it was a beautiful time. We used to learn songs uh, each and every Saturday. Uh, Saturday uh, being given a paper printed, the song I'm going to be found learning. And then on Sunday, get to minister uh, with it. In that it was good times and we're still living in these good times uh, because it's usually from glory to glory and uh, usually from one level uh, over to the next and those of whom appear before the Lord they grow from strength to strength and so it's my prayer my heart is that each and every one of us in that we're going to be found living a life of following Jesus or following him where he goes we go uh, where he stays we stays and Ruth go to tell Naomi where you go I'll go where you stay I'll stay uh, your God uh, your God is going to be found being my God your people are going to be found being my people in that this issue there's an advantage that she saw she was going to be found having in her life by simply following her and that's the thing about followership uh, today in uh, social media handles like to, uh, for instance Instagram Twitter you should like follow 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 and then and those of whom you and those of whom you assemble you resemble those of whom you follow you're going to be found ending up being like them and so let you always be keen on those of whom you want to follow and that follow them knowing that there's a making that's going to be found happening as long as you have chosen to be found following them follow us on instagram at slice underscore of today follow us on twitter at slice of today uh, join us at, in telegram channel slice of today and you're going to be found uh, being blessed we surely get to share different contents and uh, on different social media handles and even uh him a uh, worker god you say that where you go i'll go where you say where you go i go what you say i say what you pray i pray what you pray i pray where you go i go what you say i say what you pray i pray what you pray i pray G let us pray. Almighty now in the Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear Father, because of yet another wonderful and a beautiful day. And you given to each and every one of us. Thank you, dear Father, because we know and we, because we, are, we know and we have read in your word of God that night and day belongs to your God. And help each and every one of us, dear Father, be found making the best out of the day, making the best out of the night, oh God, for the glory and honor of your name, oh God. Let each and every one of us be life, uh, living a life of casting our bread into the many waters, oh God, uh, because we never know of where our uh, our return is going to be found coming from, oh God. Let each and every one of us live a life of being hardworking, oh God, uh, because we know that the hard workers live a life of bec becoming wealthy, oh God. Let your grace continue on being sufficient in our life, oh God. And your grace, dearly Father, is what leads us to our destiny, oh God. And when that you believe that each and every one of us are destined for great things, oh God, and let each and every one of us live a life of hearing your voice, following your voice, oh God, all the days of our life, oh God. Your God who says, you know what, that your sheep knows your voice, oh God, and they follow your God. When you hear any voice which ain't of you, oh God, let us uh, depart away from it, oh God, 
Bible, let it change even of us daily. Father, before living a life of hearing you, O oh God, and following you, O oh God, as I'm going from sharing your word, O oh God, the entrance of your word brings light and understanding to the simple, O oh God. And whatever measure we used to hear, it shall be measured back to us, O oh God. May change even of us, O oh God, and hear what the Spirit has to say to us. And these are prayer of faith that are prayed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, as I promised in my last sharing, I'm going to find doing a part two. And I know and I do believe that we are going to be blessed. I uh, just told the man to stretch his hand. Every time that we go to uh, to be in the Lord's house, uh, the everything says that I was glad when they say to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Uh, because the psalm that we it's only found in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, the fullness of joy, and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And these pleasures uh, he wants to be found giving them unto us in the book of uh, in the book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 13. I uh, read about Jesus Christ healing on the Sabbath. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were always pissed off by Jesus Christ uh, doing the miracles on the Sabbath. And I had uh, Bill Pastor Bill Johnson uh, once shared uh, saying that. Uh, Josh is telling them that if you ha if you had your donkey and it fell into a pit, uh, you would help it out. And the donkey refers to wealth. In that people on the Sabbath day, people on Sunday, they are usually up and about, uh, going for wealth, going for wealth, going for wealth. Uh, and and they are and they keep themselves from doing what's good. And we're going to find looking into it, uh, so that we can get the whole story about it. In the book of Matthew, chapter twelve, verse nine, he says that moving on from there, just entered their synagogue. Moving on from there, just entered in their synagogue, and a man with a withered hand was there. In order to accuse Jesus, they asked him, Is it lawful uh, to heal on the Sabbath? He replied, If one of you has a sheep and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, thank you, Holy Spirit, so we can continue on, uh, uh, into a pit on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. It will be lawful for good for us to do good on the Sabbath. And anointing always flow. I uh, just fire. I said anointing always flow. And so, for each and every one of us living a life of always advancing is what is required of us. In the book of Acts, it says that Jesus Christ was anointed with with the Holy Spirit and with power, and he did good everywhere he went he did good everywhere he went and so each and every one of us we all need an anointing and in the place of serving the lord in the place of service a grace and anointing surely gets to multiply surely gets to increase and so to each and every one of us in whatever child that you fellowship in in that make sure that you are serving make sure that you are part of a uh, of a of a department if i may use the word and uh, serving the lord that's how grace uh, gets to be multiplied to you and that's how uh, more anointing gets to flow in your life in that grace and anointing won't be found multiplying in your life you're only just sitting down watching things happen and uh, we are the people to be found making things happen my Paul and said that we ought not to be found involving ourselves with civilians affair uh, because we are soldiers in the army of the lord and we are uh, and we should be found living a life of being answerable to our commander uh, Josh Kai said that how much more valuable is a man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then just say to the man, stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out and it was restored to full to full use. And so that's surely the meaning about healing. Healing is surely a restoration of, of a restoration of that which was taken away from you. Is usually life being ministered to you. Uh, just like the other. But the Pharisees went out and plotted how they might kill him. And so uh, the Pharisees are not happy with a man being killed. And I remember one time around, uh, a paralyzed man was being brought to Jesus Christ, and then uh, uh, he was dropped down from the, he was lowered down from the roof. And then Jesus Christ said that, uh, I've forgiven you of your sin, and the Pharisees are like, uh, how can you forgive someone of his sin? And Jesus Christ asks, which is easier for me to do? Uh, which is easier for me to tell him your sin has been forgiven, or for me to tell him stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? And that Jesus Christ talked about the forgiveness of sin and healing. Uh, in the same breath, in the same breath. And that's why in the book of Psalms, he says that, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and don't forget of his benefit. He forgives us of all our sins, and he heals all our diseases. And so each and every one of us, you ought to be found living a life of knowing that as easy as you are forgiven of your sin, that's how easy with ease healing ought to be found coming to you uh, without any coercion, without any 
uh, dramatic uh, scenes being done in that that's how easy salvation uh, that's how easy healing should be found coming to you and Pastor Joshua said that if the devil and the ancestors didn't keep you from receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, don't ever think that they can ever uh, hinder your, your, your progress in life. You know, times people usually like, oh, generation, 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 and that they keep on emphasizing, emphasizing about it. If they do not keep you from receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if they don't keep you from confessing your way into salvation, then they cannot keep you away from confessing your way into victory, into prosperity, into everything good in life. And so, I hope they thought of it. Uh, just guys, watch the uh, widow give and said she gave much. I shall like I'm telling people and saying to people in that even if you don't have money, in that you just go and offer yourself as a sacrifice, <laughs> not as in offer yourself as a sacrifice. You just go. Uh, Paul Rice said that I beseech you, brethren, in the mercy of the Lord. Uh, offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, for that's your spiritual act of worship. That's your spiritual act of worship. Even in the book of Genesis, we are seeing that God accepted Abel and accepted his sacrifice. God didn't uh, reject Cain and rejected his sacrifice. Uh, watch the order, observe the order. In the talking, I talk about first of all, God accepting. I talk about God accepting Abel. God accepting Abel and so that's also to each and every one of us God accepting us and how does God accept us one we need to be have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior uh, so that uh, so that we can be clothed with in him and every time that God looks to us sees us he only sees his son in the book of in the book of Mark chapter 12 verse 41 to 44 uh, it says it talks about the widow's offering in that uh, today I'm doing a part two about the church and I know and I do believe that we are being blessed we are being blessed and so is in the child that we get to like the man who had a withered hand and he was in the synagogue in that he was not out uh, looking for a doctor looking for a physician even the woman who had the issue of blood in that she suffered a lot of deal uh, and she has suffered a lot of deal in the hands of many physicians and she has spent everything that she had and then she heard about Jesus Christ and she had the faith if only I can touch the garments uh, if only I can touch the edge of his garment then I'm going to be being made whole and she went touch the edge uh, touch the hedge of the garment of Jesus Christ and at once she felt healing she felt healing and so people tend to first of all feel healing uh, feelings that some, there's something that's uh, happening inside of you the same way that people feel that they are sick feel that they're not breathing normally there is a pain up in a particular area that's what the same thing that happened to her in that she felt she felt that she had been healed and that's why I'm not telling you to emphasize on feelings uh, but she was like for real for real now I'm pretty pretty sure uh, that I've been healed in the book of Mark chapter 12 verse 41 to 44 and it said just sat opposite the place where the offering were put and watch the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury uh, many rich people threw in a large amount but a widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth of worth, in, worth only a few cents uh, calling his disciple sorry calling his disciples to him just say truly i tell you this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the other they all gave out of their wealth but she out of her poverty put in everything all that she had to live on each and every one of us are living a life on god living a life of depending on god aunt M. brown was in a youth uh, meeting and then we we're talking about uh, giving unto the Lord, giving our offering unto the Lord, giving our tithe unto the Lord. You know, times people on Sunday may be like, hey, let me today not carry a lot of money uh, so that in church and the service is going on, I will not be prompted into giving a lot of money. And so people usually prefer to leave their money behind uh, in, in their home and so that and go to church uh, when they're only having the offering so that they cannot end up giving much. In that that's an evil spirit that's operating in your life and you ought to be found killing it and the reason why we usually give our our tithing and our offering uh, is so that we can kill the lust of money so that we can kill the love of money our poor said say that it's, the love of money is the root of all evil and so god gave unto us a system for us to kill our love of money so that we can be found living a life of being cheerful giver wherever our heart is as our treasure lies and so let us not ever feel uh, bad when you're going uh, to church with money and then maybe there will be a project maybe the holy spirit will be like today give this amount today give this amount 
uh, in that you should always be prepared. You should always be prepared. A statement that you can like carry a large amount of money when you're going out with your friends and knowing that um, if they tell us, to, if, if they say we do this, we do this, we do this, I don't want to be disadvantaged. The same thing also to each and every one of us. And then with our offering is what we get to uh, with our offering is what we get to tap into the blessing of, of, of the Lord, uh, into the into get to see into the world which has been spoken. And that's the important thing about giving. And David Rison said that I cannot offer unto the Lord that which costs me nothing. I cannot offer unto the Lord that which costs me nothing. The other king was like, Let me give you the let me give you the booze that you're gonna find offering to your Lord. But David's like, now nah, thank you. I cannot offer unto the Lord that which costs me nothing. In that they all understood the principle of giving. Even Solomon when he was dedicated to the Lord to the Lord in that a large amount of cattle was slaughtered. And then we're seeing the fire of the, of the God fill the room they, and then he ministered to everyone, even to the priest, even to the priest. And that's the thing about about our giving. In that formation like giving after the sermon, so that I can be knowing what I am giving a seed into. I just sat down at uh, the upper, the opposite the place where the offering were put not drop or put in that is the putting that's the same thing about whenever we put our seeds to the ground for farmers and for people who want to harvest later on they put the seed into the ground they usually put it with an expectation in that this seed is going to be found growing uh, and i'm going to found harvesting at a particular time in that they don't drop it but they put it and watch the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury many rich threw in their large amount in that threw in they did not put it uh, but the widow came and put in two and so i hope that you're seeing the difference in that for this rich guy they were throwing it they're throwing it in that it's like they're having surplus and they don't like even depend on what they are giving <laughs> it's like if if don't be returned well and good if they're not be returning to return well and good you know the way someone can go out and throw out uh, they are rubbish in that they've just thrown it out in that whoever will come and pick it i don't care but when you put it in a particular way in that god usually commands a blessing wherever it's ordered that's why jewish guys told the five thousand people four thousand people to sit down in groups and the multiplication happened each and every one of them got to be satisfied in that there's usually um there's usually a blessing that comes uh when, wherever there's order multiplication that comes wherever there's order and so but this widow came put in two very small coins a uh, worth only of two cents uh, calling his disciple to him just said truly i tell you this widow has put more into the treasury than all the others she has put she has put and that she's going for harvesting they all gave out of their wealth but she gave out of her poverty out of her poverty and uh, there's gonna be found a, a wonderful time coming later on to her in the book of um, Matthew 9 20 to 22 and then just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him touched the edge of his cloak she said to herself if only I touch his cloak I'll be healed just turned and saw her take her daughter he said your faith has healed you and faith comes by hearing uh, that, uh, as far as a lot of things, uh, Matthew 5 25, he said that, and a woman who was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors, many physicians, and had spent all she had, all her money, she spent it all. Yet, in, instead of getting better, she was she grew worse. That's how you get to know that it's spiritual. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because he, um, she thought, if, if, if I just touch, his clothes, I will be healed. And we all know that Jesus Christ was surrounded by a, a, a large multitude of people. But for her, she's like, I want to touch Jesus. I want to touch him. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt, and she felt in her body that she was freed. She was freed from her suffering. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Whatever God does in our life is permanent. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing can be taken away from it. I sure like that part. Whatever God does in our life is permanent. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing can be taken away from it. And so whatever the devil does to us can be taken away, can be removed. <laughs> Uh, at one just realized that power had gone out of him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, the disciple answered, and yet you can ask who touched you, but just kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing that what had happened to her, in the visually something that happens to us wherever we are in the fellowship, wherever we are together with other brethren, in that there's something that happens to us, may we always be awake and we always be aware uh, to experience of what God is doing in our life, what God, God is doing in our present, in our future, dealing with our past, because He's a loving God and He knows all of those of whom have been gathered in His sanctuary. So that's it for today. I hope that you have been blessed by it. And so <laughs> the blessing of being in the house of the Lord, put in your offering, don't drop it, put in, uh, speak a word to it, uh, whatever what you want to have is later on. And it's going to come into pass. That's how we get to usher ourselves into season. On the third day, God created them. 
on the third day God created the plants, the vegetable. On the fourth day, He created the sun, moon, and the stars in that day seed before the seasons so which any one of us we can control whatever season we want to enter into by our giving our giving with understanding understanding that i want to have a kid and then you give your seed <laughs> Uh, your blessing, a blessing, blessing you're going in and coming out, blessing kept by the Lord. The Lord goes before you, his head is before you, behind you, his hand is upon you. You are blessed, a blessing, blessing the country and blessing the city, blessed and kept by the Lord. The Lord has lifted his continuous upon you and his gracious towards you, and the Lord's faithfulness around you like a city wall, and you are blessed of the Lord. You cannot be cast. I speak healing, shalom, healing, well being, wholesomeness into, into your life, into your body. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray.